Hello, and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. My name's Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time, we're going to show you how to use Active Directory to authenticate VPN users with LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. This video is a companion to Chapter 8 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. The book is certainly not required, but if you'd like to pick up a copy, it's available through the usual online resellers and at our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Our ASA software version is 9.11. This will apply to most recent versions. You may have to make a couple of minor adjustments in syntax, but uh, most recent versions, specifically uh, 8.3 and later. ASDM is not going to be used in this demonstration. Here's our network diagram for the exercise. You'll need a, uh, a server acting as an Active Directory server. Actually, the procedures I'm going to show you should work with pretty much any LDAP server, but the one we're using is a Microsoft Server 2012 box uh, running Active Directory. Um, and you'll need a, a management workstation connected via serial console cable to your ASA. You'll need a VPN client on the outside, and optionally you may want to have internet access, but it's not required for the purpose of the demonstration. Equipment software requirements, a little more specifically. You'll need a Cisco ASA security appliance with a base license, and you'll need to have a remote access VPN already configured. If you don't know how to do that, check out our video on setting up a remote access AnyConnect VPN, and it'll walk you through it, and then you can come back and do this, uh, this video and see how to set it up with LDAP. You'll need a computer running as a management workstation. One computer serving as a VPN client, the client that we're running, the AnyConnect client, is supported on Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8. Other clients are supported, but for the purpose of our demonstration, that's what we're using. The, the client we're going to use is actually running Windows 8. You'll need a computer running Microsoft Active Directory um, and a console cable connected to the serial port on the management workstation and the console port on the ASA, and some kind of terminal emulation software. Uh, the one I'm using is Putty. Maybe you use Secure CRT, TerraTerm, even HyperTerminal will work for this. Prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you'll need the following. Unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco ASA security appliance and an Active Directory user account and a password. Here's a summary of the steps. This is almost identical to setting it up, say, for Kerberos. You'll create an AAA server group. That's authentication, authorization, and accounting, if you're not familiar with that. You'll configure the group to support LDAP authentication, and you'll add the authentication server group to the appropriate VPN users tunnel group. You don't have to do much on the, actually, you don't have to do anything on the Active Directory server as long as it's set up with LDAP. This is going to authenticate against Active Directory. It's not like setting up a radius server where you have to go in and configure it. Here's your disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production firewall without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Performing these procedures may open your firewall to the public internet and subject your network to attack, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. As usual, a good idea. So let's do the demo. And first thing we need to do is get into global configuration mode with the command configure terminal, which I will abbreviate probably the same way you do with conf space T. And now we're going to create our AAA server group with the command AAA-server. And then just some name to identify it. And I like to put it in all caps to make it easier to see in the configuration and also give it a descriptive name so I can remember what it is later on. So LDAP servers. And that's just an arbitrary name that I came up with. And then specify protocol and the protocol, which is going to be LDAP. Now we're in AAA server group configuration mode. We need to identify our AAA server, our LDAP server, with the command AAA-server. Once again, LDAP servers. This has to match what we just configured. And then... Where it's located, it's connected to our inside interface on the ASA. Presumably you'll know that. Could be on your outside or some other. And then the host statement uh, with the IP address of the server. So 192.168.101.101. That's done. And now we need to set up our LDAP components. Um, and we'll start by identifying our base distinguished name. So LDAP-base 
distinguished name. By the way, I'm not going to explain the LDAP names here, the, the abbreviations, other than to uh, use the, the long name rather than the abbreviation. But if you're not familiar with LDAP, uh, O'Reilly has a great tutorial, and it's available for free. If you'll just search on the internet for 10-minute LDAP tutorial, you'll find it, and it'll explain all of this stuff to you. But presumably, if you're setting up LDAP for authentication, you at least have some familiarity with it. So LDAP base DN as in distinguished name, and we'll enter our domain components, DC equals sound training. And the other DC in there is local, because our Active Directory domain name is soundtraining.local. So typically, that's going to correspond. Now we have to specify the range of searching capability, the scope. And we'll use that with the command LDAP-scope. And you can either make it stay at the top of the domain tree, or you can let it go into subtrees. And we'll just say subtree. You may want to limit it for whatever reason, and, and you can certainly do that. And now we're going to use the LDAP naming attribute statement to specify the LDAP name within the Active Directory. And, and in this case, we're going to use the default in Microsoft Active Directory, which is SAM account name. Some of you may remember the old days of NT and, and the SAM database, the Security Accounts Manager, and this kind of harkens back to those days. So the, uh, the, the case is a little odd, uh, but again, if you remember NT40, it may not seem that odd to you. But it's lowercase s, uppercase AMA, CCOUNT, and then uppercase and a M E. That is, again, the default attribute in Microsoft Active Directory. If you're using a different one, then presumably you'll know what that is. Now the LDAP-login-password. This is the uh, password for the username that we're about to configure. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just using administrator. But in real world, you may want to narrow that down for security purposes. Uh, but my admin password on my test system is p at ss. 5678. And now I have to configure the username. And the command is LDAP login DN for distinguished name. Common name equals administrator. Common name equals users because the administrator account is stored in the users uh, container within Active Directory. And then domain component DC equals sound training, and a final domain component equals local. Now there's one more statement, and that is the server type. Cisco ASA Security Appliance supports LDAP authentication against Novell LDAP servers, Open LDAP, Microsoft, and Sun, um, and perhaps others, but those are the four that it specifies if you uh, bring up the help. In fact, I'll just show you that. We'll enter a question mark here so you can see. Um, and we'll just go with the auto detect on this and let it pick it up. And I've never had any problem with that, so we'll do auto detect. And we should be good to go. Let's test the authentication now with the command test AAA server authentication LDAP servers host. 192.168.101.101. I'm assuming that this is all pretty obvious what we're doing here. Now you need to specify the username. So user 01. This has to be a user that would be authorized to log in using LDAP for uh, VPN access and the user's password, which is p at ss 1234. By the way, uh, I've got my display configured to show a very wide terminal width. Yours may truncate it, and, and if you see a dollar sign at uh, either end of the uh, statement, don't worry about that. It's still taking the command as, as you type it. But let's go ahead and hit Enter and see what happens. And there you can see it was successful. Now, uh, we still um, are not going to be able to authenticate uh, the VPN user uh, using the AnyConnect client until we add the, the authentication server group to the tunnel group for our VPN users. And this is why you need to have the VPN set up already. So I'm going to go into tunnel group configuration mode with the command tunnel dash group. And I'm going to specify my pre-configured tunnel that I already, or tunnel group that I already have in there. And this tunnel group is called account reps NA, as in North America. And you just have to know what the name is. 
Um, and then we're going to set the general attributes. So general dash attributes. And actually, if you do the command show run tunnel, and let me do that for you so you can see what's already configured. There, if you look toward the bottom, you can see that I've already got some attributes set up for the account reps NA tunnel group, uh, like the address pool and the default policy. We simply need to add in the authentication server group now. So let's do that with the command authentication dash server dash group. And we're going to say LDAP servers and then local. Now, let me explain that what this does is this says that first, if you're a VPN user, the first thing we want to do is we want to try to reach the server or servers specified in the LDAP servers group and do the authentication that way. But if for whatever reason that server or servers aren't available, then we're going to fall back to local authentication. That's what the local statement does. You don't have to put it in there, but it's hard to imagine a situation where you wouldn't. Maybe in some extremely secure setting you might uh, leave that out, but that just gives you a backdoor in case the LDAP server isn't available. It's not if the LDAP server authentication fails. It's if you simply can't get to the LDAP server, the network's down or whatever, then it will fall back to local authentication. And that's always a good idea to have that just in case. So now let's try the authentication and see what happens using the Cisco AnyConnect client. So here's the client. Let's, uh, let's tab over to connect. You can see I'm connecting to asa01.soundtraining.net, which matches the certificate. If you're not familiar with that, we've got another video on installing a, a, uh, an SSL certificate. But let's just go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. Contacting, asking for the username we'll, uh, and the password. So we'll enter p at ss1234. And look at that. It's establishing the session, and we are in. So there's a lot to think about there, um, and especially if you compare it to Kerberos. And one of the questions that came up, I think, on our Facebook page, somebody said, why would you want to use, say, LDAP versus Kerberos versus Radius? And I think the answer really boils down to this. First of all, Kerberos and uh, LDAP are used only with VPNs. So you would use Radius if you wanted to authenticate administrator users. Say you want to authenticate your SSL or ASDM users. Then you're going to either use Radius or TACX+. But if you just want to integrate um, VPN access with Active Directory, Kerberos is a pretty lean and mean way to do it, but it doesn't give you any additional information such as what you get with LDAP. There's a little more overhead associated with LDAP. Kerberos is uh, a little less configurable, but a little less overhead. So maybe that helps you make the decision. You can also use RSA Secure ID, and there's several other forms of authentication if you want to. But I think Kerberos, LDAP are probably the two most commonly used, maybe an RSA Secure ID. Um, for VPN users. And then if you want to authenticate um, administrator users and VPN users, then you're probably going to be looking at either TACX Plus or Radius. And we'll cover Radius in a different video. We have lots of other resources for you. Um, and you can visit our website at www.soundtraining.net for those resources. A lot of the procedures that I describe in my videos, I also detail in blog posts at soundtraining.net slash blog. We've got a newsletter you can subscribe to that'll let you know when we have new videos and new blog posts and books and other things available. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. Hey, please like us on Facebook. Use your support at soundtraining.net slash Facebook, or if you prefer, follow us on Twitter or Google+. If you'd like more videos, we're adding new ones all the time. I try to add at least one a week, sometimes more, occasionally less, at soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like uh, the companion book, it's available from our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time. <laughs>